functionality. But he will rule over. Sin would mar God's plan for marriage and create a tormenting inequality, a subjugation that was never meant to be. The pull of sin carries with it the desire to dominate. Everybody wants to be the boss. Sometimes the boss doesn't want to be the boss, but everybody else does. The sin carries with it the sense of, of desire to dominate. The New Testament states that marriage should reflect the relationship that each and every individual has with Jesus. And it tells us that husbands are to be Christ's likeness to their wives. There's that image again. There's that likeness. Husbands are to be Christ's likeness to their wives. Once again, a woman should be able to look at a godly man, an image bearer, and say, there is a God, because my husband resembles him. A man should be able to look at an image bearing woman and say, there is a God. There is truly a God in heaven. Now, I've heard a lot of guys use this pickup line because you're an angel. Well, women aren't angels. Men aren't angels. They're three different beings. But you should know that there is a God by looking at an image bearing man or woman in your life. Matthew Henry had an interesting thing to say concerning women. She was not made out of his head to rule over him, nor out of his feet to be trampled upon by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, under his arm to be protected by him, and near to his heart to be loved by him. In the image of God, he created male and female. No gender confusion. Let me tell you, it may be natural to have confusion. What is not natural is to not correct that confusion. Now, if somebody came up to me while I'm standing out here in the parking lot and said, look, I'm trying to find shoppers. And I just feel like that if I go up to the next street and hang a left, that I should go down there and be able to find shoppers. I've done that three times. And I've driven down there, and I finally come across the giant. I came across the Safeway, but I never found shoppers. I really feel like I should be able to find shoppers by taking a left. Let me straighten up your confusion. Go up to that next corner and go right. Go right. Stop going wrong. I don't care what you feel like. Go right. And after about a mile and a half, you'll find what you've been seeking. You'll find shoppers. You know, little boys, as long as I know, have at one point wanted to play with little girls' toys and little girls. But somebody said, come on, son. I'm going to go mow the yard so you get your little mower that blows bubbles up in the air. Come on, daughter. Come on into the kitchen with mama and help cook. Now, those are some roles that obviously, you know, we don't hold to or male or female roles. But I'm saying somebody has to help straighten out the confusion or be dead. treasures of heaven in is a clay pot. And 
I've realized the longer I live, a lot of those pots are crack pots. They bore the treasures of the universe for many decades, but they're broken. They're knockoffs from the original. Now, here's, a, here's an important fact for you to learn today. Listen up. We are not divine. We overestimate our value. We need to remember that our greatness consists in our being reflections of the real thing. Now, there's good mirrors and bad mirrors. I was at a yard sale not too long ago. There was this huge, ornate mirror. It was three pieces from here to maybe here. And each piece had mirror in it that some of the silver must have been removed from the back because it was blotchy. And if you try to figure out, I mean, I wouldn't know to comb my hair or to mess it up or something, you know, from what those, uh, oh, the frame was so beautiful. So everybody kept stopping to see the frame of this mirror. But when you look in the mirror, you can't see your reflection. The greatness is that we're image bearers. And that all the time, every day, we're getting better at reflecting the grandeur of the one who created us. Amen? That's what we want. We want to be the very best image bearers. I think of little Abel. You know who Abel is? Adam and Eve. Can it? Abel. I read this. It's not mine. I didn't invent it. Little Abel going to his mama. Mama, why is it you call daddy Adam? What's the name God gave him? Why do you ask? It just sounds like dirt. In Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed the man. Hebrew word, Adam. Of dust from the ground. Hebrew word, Adama. A-D-A-M-A-H. From dust we were created. To dust we will return. Please note that this was before the fall. This is not due to sin that we're dirty. We were created from it. He took and scraped up a little dirt in his hands. He formed it. Blew a kiss. Which I think a little DNA was exchanged. And we were created living beings in his image. We weren't created out of gold like many of the images that the Pharaohs cast of themselves. I want you to know that we are fully disposable, completely biodegradable. We were created from dust, and unto dust shall we return. Romans 12, 3 tells us that we should not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. I, I invite you to go to the ocean. Go to the brink of where land ends and the ocean begins and those huge waves continue to just come one after another endlessly and as far as you can see that ocean and proclaim yourself to be mighty. Drive to the glorious Rockies and think that you're powerful. Well, the Grand Canyon, what God has made, those invisible qualities are made clear through what He has made, that there is a God and you're not Him. Now, I don't know if you all did this as a child, but I remember even as a child, People say, you know, if God's almighty, can God build a rock too big for God to pick up? He did. He did. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit were all involved in creation. And they built the great Rockies. And yet when Jesus 
was on this earth and they'd been many a rock that he couldn't have lifted. But he said, just a mustard seed of faith and move the mountain. Amen. <clears throat> Will you accept a God who must be enfleshed in dirt in order that he might reach low enough to save a sinner like you? You must. For that is the God of Christianity. You must accept a God who in all of his splendor, everything, angelic beings, and everything that has ever been created was created by him for his glory. And he left it. He took it off for a little while to become lower than the angels. That's the time that he was that he took on humanity, took on flesh. And he got lower than dirt in order that he might be in a place that he can lift us out of the mire, out of the cesspool, pick up our broken pieces and start to mend our lives once again. If that's not enough, so he kissed us and breathed air into our lungs. When one is confused about the direction of their life, let me encourage you. Go to the Word of God. Go to the church. His body, that which he has formed in order to give good, clear direction. His invisible qualities are made clear by what he's made. And give him good GPS coordinates you know, God's plan of salvation. Coordinates of how to get out of their confusion and go right. I want to close this morning. A little late. We're going to have a meeting in just a few moments for those who want to stay a QA day on our building. And I want to make a comment about this building. I have been here in four months. It'll be ten years. I'm in my tenth year here. Include a march. And I believe, I can say with all integrity, but I'll check with Gary Moore because he records every, uh, every passage that I preach out of. Tell me if I preach out of that passage before. Knows what I'm, thank you, Gary. I believe, I can say with all integrity, I've never preached on giving or preached on money as the topic of the sermon. I believe that that's correct. In 10 years, shame on me, I probably should have. Although we have exceeded every goal we have ever laid out in this church. Again, shame on me. I should have been setting a lot higher and a lot more goals. But I asked Abby and I asked Grace this week when I picked him up from school and Mitch was out of town and Nancy was in a class of life. I asked him, let me ask you, why would you give to the building program? I don't know. I have an answer for you. We're going to get into a building program and it's going to be somewhat architectural evangelism. So people are going to come out like they would for a fire. Come out and see what's happening. And when they come, hopefully they'll see what's happening. They'll experience what's going on. A love that they've never experienced elsewhere maybe. But you know why? Within five miles of this church, I know multiple, multiple, multiple churches and pastors who would not feel it's their responsibility to give you good GPS coordinates to straighten out your confusion. Who won't preach the truth? As long as I'm here, I will do everything within my ability to bring the truth. And I hope a long time after me, that will be the standard, the word of God, brought down by the God of the Word. No matter what's going on in my own life, if I sin, I don't justify my sin. I rather confess it so that I can continue to proclaim truth. 
People tell me I've broken all the Ten Commandments. I said, you've never broken one single commandment. Because if God said, thou shalt not commit adultery, you go out and commit adultery, you have been broken. But this commandment remains firm. It's still wrong. It's still not right. The truth must be what remains. And I believe, kids, no matter what you hear anywhere else, no matter what kind of tolerance is taught, no matter what kind of confusion is encouraged, well, just explore it. God created male and female created him. Now, there's a straight way to go. Now, I want you to know that you can always come back to church to get your bearings. And when you have friends that have lost their way, you can bring them to church. So whether it's a dollar of your allowance or for any of us older folks that feel like leave something that will be a firm foundation for the next generation and the next if the Lord tarries. That's why I would say give to a building program because yeah, we can get paint guns and shoot it all over this building. But I believe, I believe this building Nah, who cares? But I believe in church, the firm foundation, the provider of the truth, must remain a standard a place where people can come and expect <clears throat> to get clear direction. And those who won't give it, they'll answer God. I invite you this morning. As J.J. said, as he comes, musicians come, as he said earlier, I'm not waiting for someone else to start revival. Revival's begun in my own heart. I want you this morning to think about that comment. Think about what you may need to do or say to the Lord this morning. I want you to think about that image bearing 